I'm not saying, okay, well, now you got to join a BNI group, a Latip group. You got to go to eight business yeah. sectors. Find what you're already doing and do more of it. Yeah. And that's the big thing because it's just social cir circles around everything. I off road. I used to mountain bike. I don't do so much anymore. I'm getting older, but um, off roading, uh, mountain biking, hiking, just soccer. Yeah, I play soccer. So I have my team. I actually have playoffs tonight. <laughs> um, so go dad bods. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of his team. Plugging my team. <laughs> um, so yeah, just doing those things though. You do what you love and, and you'll make connections. Away podcast. I am joined today by a very special guest, Dan Benjamin. Dan has been on our team for how many years now? Two years. Two years. Wow. Yep. I thought it was a lot longer. Seems like forever. Dan's been on our team for two years. Solid performer. We absolutely love having you on the team. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit today about how you utilize your sphere and social media mm -hmm. um, and how you plan to or how you've done it in the past to really help build your business in a way that. Um, doesn't burn you out consistently. Is that fair? Is yeah. That talk about today? Yeah, totally. So uh, if you guys are new here, my name is Brian Kochi. I am the director of marketing here at Whistle Realty Group. Like I said, my co-host today, Dan Benjamin. Dan, how long have you been a realtor? Yeah, I'm Dan Benjamin. I've been in uh, real estate now for 10 years. So. Awesome. And on our team for two. Um, yeah. On the Whistle Way podcast, we really try and break down uh, some tactical things for you to use in your business um, to help make you make more money, spend less time, uh, avoid some mistakes that we have made and uh, just try and make you better at your job. Uh, one of the, one of my favorite quotes, I don't know if he created this or not, but I, I'll credit him. Gary V says, there's two ways you can be the biggest building in town. You can either tear down every other building around you. So therefore you're the only one standing and you're the biggest building, or you can build the biggest building by building your business, but you can still help other people build theirs around them. Definitely. Um, and that's really kind of how our mindset here. Uh, if you guys are watching this, if you guys like this, please do us a favor, like, share, comment uh, on YouTube, on Facebook, wherever you're seeing this, um, and leave us a review on your favorite podcast app. That's super important to us. Finally, if you want more information like this, you can go to thewhistleway.com. That's thewhistleway.com. You can join our Facebook group, join our email newsletter. You can um, learn about our outgoing referral program. You can learn information about our Media Mayor Mastermind course, uh, and you can ask a question that we will answer here on the show. All right, that's all that. Let's get into the meat. But Dan's like, am I doing good? I've said three words so far. Uh, Dan, thanks for being on. Uh, You're welcome. <laughs> first, I want to look at the last 12 months yes. of your business. I want you to kind of think back, reflect. I pulled the numbers for you. Um, you closed 16 deals this year mm -hmm. um, and 250K in GCI. Again, we're in San Diego. Our average price is different than other people. But 250K in GCI, 16 deals. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit a bit about how 2022 went for you with it being such a difficult year. Yeah, it was a it was a tough year for a lot of us with interest rates changing, obviously. But um, and I think I would have closed more had we not had the the rate hikes. But um, one of the some of the main points of how I got to there uh, were just really building my sphere and uh, focusing in on that. So. Uh, people who know you, like you, trust you, say that many times probably, but they're the ones that I kind of doubled down on and really went to town and, and worked for them. So um, that would be kind of what my my focus was on. Yeah. And it was really fun because I pulled the numbers from 2021 um, mm -hmm. and you had closed two deals less. So you had 14 deals, mm -hmm. but uh, what is that? 50, 60, 90K less yeah. in GCI. So you had your 169 GCI. Oh, so whatever. Um, 2021 and 250 2022. Right. What's the big attribution? What? How did you do that? Yeah. So it's just, well, housing prices went up too, which helped some, but yep. the, uh, the obvious of uh, just connecting with more people. Um, I probably would have closed closer to 30 this year had the market not shifted. So um, those numbers, even though they're more, aren't a huge number more, would have been a lot, a lot different had the, uh, the market not shifted on us, but yeah, and I, I remember last year you did a lot more mobile homes. And I feel like you, <laughs> I feel like Vaughn took that over from you this year. Yeah, I did have, I did have quite a few uh, homes that were on the lower price point. So yeah. that was that that first year. But literally building the business up and really talking to the sphere um, and and connecting with people more, um, being purposeful with those connections, 
Um, I talked about, well, some of it was social media connected to. So um, putting on just videos or just touching touch points consistently on social media helped. I think I'd have people just call me up and say, hey, my, you know, I need to list my family member's house. Like, can you do it? No, so, call again. <laughs> yeah. Fill out so, this form. <laughs> and those are, to me, they're the best clients to have because they, they already, you know, there's no, uh, we don't have to go in and sell them on what, why they should use me. They already know that they already know me and, and they're just asking me to do my job and which I love doing. So hundred percent. So I want to get into that a little bit more. I want to get mm -hmm. a little more tactical. Um, I know we've talked about utilizing social media more in your business. You and I have talked about that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to talk about kind of your plan for, for 2023 and what your yeah. vision looks like. But before we do that, um, I told you, I wouldn't put you, uh, throw numbers at you, but now I'm curious because you said I would have done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously this is a, a guesstimate. This is a goal. This is a, a prediction, but what, what do you visualize yourself? How many deals do you think you are going to close by the end of 2023? Yeah. So 2023, I want to at least, um, double what I've done this year. So, um, trying to do that every year is double what I've done and just build on that. So, um, just to not be stagnant, the grow or die mm -hmm. mentality. And, uh, I just want to be growing and keep, keep going. So, um, yeah, so my future goal for next for 2023, um, I'd like to at least close 30, 35 units somewhere in there Cool, and, uh, double my GCI. Cool. Let's get you in that platinum club, right? Yes. Perfect. All right. So let's break down how we're going to do that on what you can control, right? You can't control the market. Right. Um, and being on the team, there's not a lot where you can control the quality of leads or the types of leads or the number of leads that mm -hmm. come to you uh, from the team. Mm -hmm. um, but you can control what you can control, right? You can right. control your self-generated stuff. Yep. You can control your communication with with your database. Yep. Let's and talk about your sphere and your database. What's your communication plan in 2023? What do you want to do? Yeah, definitely. Um, some of what we do are community events or um, we do client appreciation type parties and whatnot. So um, I'm going to double down on those and really uh, personally invite them and do different different style of invite than what we've done in the past. Tell me more. Um, so for me personally. So, so before you tell me more, let me tell them what we currently do. Yeah. Because I want to know what you want to do because I want to do it for everyone. <laughs> Is that fair? Is sure. that cool? He's like, never, I'm not going to tell you anymore. <laughs> not so what we do for our client appreciation <laughs> events, we call them our friends and family events because they don't want to be referred to as clients. So these are our friends and family. Mm -hmm. And we also don't want to discourage agents that maybe have only one client or no clients to not invite people. The whole point of these events is to communicate with our database, communicate with our sphere. Mm -hmm. uh, we send out mailed invites uh, to our database. And so they get nice printed, folded uh, cardstock invitation in the mail. Uh, we follow that up with a couple emails and uh, from the, the team leader, from Kyle mm -hmm. Whistle, saying, hey, Dan wanted to invite you to the event, blah, blah, blah. Here's what it is. Sign up. And then um, our agents call, text, and email the two weeks or so prior to really build up interest for it. And right. the main goal of this event is not for them to show up to the event. The main goal of the event is to give you a reason to call your past clients, your sphere, your friends and family, so that way that you're top of mind, right? Right. So that's what we currently do. Yeah, absolutely. Tell me more about what what we want to add to that. Yeah. So for well, a lot of it'll be on me to add, not necessarily even the team, but to uh, make those phone calls ahead of time. Um, now I already have the date for the next one, so I can go ahead and get in touch with my clients now and tell them about it. Um, what I found was a lot of folks with families coming into the Christmas season. They're they were uh, they're like, oh, sorry, I'm busy, and that that's how a lot of my calls went. And so um, I'm gonna pre-plan it and really do in advance uh, invitations on my own and maybe even social media invites uh, of my own. Can I give a recommendation as well to that, sure. that made me think of this? Yeah. What I would recommend doing is for the people that you know you're going to invite, your 50 or 100 or whatever, mm -hmm. start communicating with them now on social media, yep. not about the event. Right. Comment on their stuff, like their stories, engage with them. Yep. So that way when you're inviting them, it's not like a out of left field, yeah. even though an out of left field invite is not bad, right. but they see you over and over and over again, just spend a couple hours a week engaging with these people. Right. That way, when you invite them, it's much more likely to have a, a stronger conversation. Yeah. And that's part of what I was, we were kind of mentioned with social media and how to, how to build on that and, uh, touching base with your clients, often, um, communicating with them, connecting with them, commenting on their posts, giving suggestions. People love when you, you know, they're like, Oh, where do I go for whatever and you're able to say oh go check out this restaurant we reviewed it last month mm -hmm. um and they just they love that they dig it so 
if we can do that more often and then when you do reach out for hey come to our party it's just not a it's a they feel like they know you even if you haven't hung out with them you're able to to get the uh that rapport or that connection real quick on social media now i was talking with clayton um at on a podcast recently Mm -hmm. um and then right after we hopped off the podcast we were talking about this literally exact same thing yeah and i said do you know about the close friends on instagram there's a close friends group and you can really easily go through and sort the people and i think it's I want to say 50. I might be making that number up. Mm-hmm. I think it was 20 at one point. I don't know. I don't remember how many of this. Yeah. But your, your top, however many they'll allow, make sure you add them in there so you can always stay engaging with them, always on their stories, always on their comments. always right. on their, like, And that way it's going to be really easy. You're staying top of mind and you're you're not asking for business. You're not like, cool, cool <laughs> bunny. You want to buy a house? Like, right. Obviously. <laughs> right. Right. Um, but just being a human being and engaging. Yeah. Now, tell me some more things you wanted to do. We talked about you wanting to dive into Instagram more yes. in the past. We talked about some accountability group ideas that we haven't launched yet. Tell me your vision for Instagram on what you want to do. And uh, mm-hmm. I'll write it down and see if we can help you with it. Yeah, for sure. Um, just something I've done in the past with Facebook and Instagram. I did them used to do them both organically. So I would post on Instagram and then physically post on Facebook separate so they didn't just feed across. Now, I don't know if that matters because... It used to be it would kind of uh, slow down your algorithm. People wouldn't look at you as much. Whatever. I don't know what's yeah. I I, it's also, I don't know the stats. Yeah, <laughs> it's also getting it done. So a hundred percent doing it twice. I'd rather do it once, and so I'm, I'm more likely to just post once and and feed it across. So um, yeah, posting at least daily. Um, but that's not just business. It's not just look at my house, look at this house, look at the house. People get tired. I think of seeing that. In my opinion, a thousand percent. So mine is about family, friends, dogs, pets, sports, things I do. Um, so I, I post more uh, basically five days a week with something personal and two days a week with uh, business. And uh, correct me if that's an incorrect. Obviously, I'm always willing to adjust, but that's the goal. I, th- I think it can can depend. I think mm-hmm. when there's a busy season, uh, you can you can change it around yeah. as long as you're not 100 percent business. Right. Um, people are always like, tell me the, I think there's a lot of a mistake. A lot of realtors make is they're like, Oh, I do social media. And they're just like, here's a house. Here's a house. Here's a house. Here's a house. And people are like, well, I could go to whatever other platform to look at houses or flip side. They're the secret agent and they don't have that. They're a realtor in their profile. They don't post anything about, yeah. about real estate. Like you got to have a mix and some days might be five and two. Some days might be four and three some days might be one and six if you're promoting something you're promoting an event or right. whatever right um and i think that's okay as long as you just keep in mind who your audience yeah. is and you don't burn them out on stuff well and consistency is huge because um if you aren't consistently posting something then you kind of get dropped down as far as views so yeah it's just being consistent okay so posting daily and that's an instagram post or is that a story or is that a reel or what do you um, i might be I might tend more towards stories now. Okay. Um, it used to be a post on both, um, but it seems that stories are the more of a place to go. Of course, having reels. Um, I don't know that I'll do a reel daily, mm-hmm. but doing reels on a consistent basis as well that are informative and, and have value. Yeah, I really like the idea of um, when you make it a, a post. I, for me, I, I do my posts or things that are a little bit more... Um, evergreen a little bit more substantial Mm -hmm. uh my personal stories are kind of like oh check it out what's going on behind the scenes that type of stuff um but i like posting when you create a post to also share that in the story yeah um and some some things that i find work really well make sure you tag people in your post stories uh and then reels my favorite thing about reels and i've talked about this nonstop, is the collaborator function Mm -hmm. so whether what we do at whistle realty group is when we do a video of one of our agents um, so say Dan came to media day, we did a, he did a video, we filmed it, we edited it, we distributed it. We invite Dan as a collaborator. And the great thing about that is all he has to do is hit accept collaboration. And now it's on your feed as well. Yeah. And so I was telling Jeremy about this. And so if we had 400 views and you had 2000 views, now it looks like we got 2,400 views. Right. Um, very little work from you. Uh, we did all the work of posting it. And so why I say this, I was talking to Thomas about this as well. Um, who's my podcast producer is um, when you do reels for other people, if you did a reel outside the bagel shop, invite them as a collaborator. Right. Invite your lender as a collaborator. If you do a reel of someone's home, 
invite the homeowner as a collaborator, That's use a them idea. as your sphere yeah. um, to just try and get more out of it. If, if you're showing properties and you do a, a really cool home that you're showing in Bay Park, invite the listing agent as a collaborator. Like mm-hmm. try and get your those relationships built, whether it's with real estate agents, loan officers, uh, homeowners, business owners. My goal, and I've told my team this, I don't want to post a reel without a collaborator. Yeah. Figure it out. Well, oh, I like that. Invite the Chamber of Commerce. I don't care. Figure it out. Post someone. Yeah. Which I did realize just recently, if you have a Instagram business account, it doesn't allow you to, if it doesn't allow Whistle Realty Group to add me as a collaborator. So there, I yeah, changed it to- It's a creator account. Creator. Yeah. There are some limitations and you got to kind of figure it out mm-hmm. um, based on if you upload music or if you use trending music, it, it gets yeah. complicated. Just something to be aware of. Yeah. Years. Don't worry about it. Just do it. Don't do um, business. Do the collaborator or crea- uh, creator. 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 Yeah. creator. Yeah. Okay. So posting daily. What else? What else are you going to use on social media um, to help grow your business? I've got a really good tip from Kyle <laughs> that I thought he was crazy until he explained himself. So I'm going to explain that next. Yeah. I I don't have uh, any real magic to that one yet, which I'd love to hear what Kyle said. But um, I watch a lot of his. I see his stories and reels, and it's often uh, you know include the family, include kids, include the fun. So. Kyle, I think, does it one of the best that I've ever seen mixing business and and personal. Mm-hmm. Um, people are like, what's the the you know the ratio? I'm like, I don't know. Look at Kyle's. Uh, at Kyle Whistle, you can check him out. Give him a follow. Uh, I think he does a phenomenal job mixing it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, his, his strategy, his challenge, his recommendation was to grow your social media presence. Mm-hmm. Do not post on social media confused tell me more <laughs> that's I, the exact, i'm like what, what are you talking about he said don't spend your time posting spend your time commenting liking engaging oh, yeah. um building relationships that way less about me and more about you same can be kind of the idea of um especially agents maybe solo agents and they say hey i only have a thousand dollars uh what leads should i buy well you yeah. can buy one zillow lead right um or, you know, a bunch of, you know, some lower quality leads. Or you can take that $1,000 a month and throw a badass party for your sphere. And yeah. It could be, hey, the first round is on me. You invite 20 people. I mean, I, I don't drink. I don't know. But I would assume if you buy the first round yeah. for 20 people, it's less than $1,000. Oh, yeah. And I'm guarantee you that built a better relationship than the $15 paperclip yeah. uh, ad you just bought. Yeah. And actually to touch base, kind of backtracking a little bit, but you asked how um, some of how I built rapport with Spear. Um, We've actually thrown parties at our own house and had over 100 people there. And it ends up being, you know, a deal at some point uh, down the line or referral. Now, I'm going to try and lead you here. I don't know if you'll go there exactly, but where do you find you get the. How do you build your sphere Mm -hmm. where what kind of areas in your life do you find? Uh, bring the best relationships uh, and therefore eventually deals when they come to you? Yeah. Well, for me it, personally, and this is just my sphere, is a lot of it comes from church. Okay. That's exactly so where I, I was trying gonna... to lead you there. Okay. <laughs> I was like, are we getting into churchy stuff? Yeah. No, let's go. I mean, we're so, not, let's go with it. But it's, it's true. So I, I do often help out or I'm volunteering or I do something at any time, any given time, I'm doing something to help other people. Um, so that does pan out and and i'm not doing that just for that and part of that i mean that's a testament to don't just have that what kyle calls it commission breath Mm -hmm. don't just go after a commission but build relationships so um really just serving our community serving each other serving the the, if it's a bagel shop down the street um you know if even adding them as a collaborator is going to be serving them in a way so absolutely i love that about that because um i haven't implemented that yet (laughs) Dan's like done i'll figure it out i'll do this um so yeah and and the reason i bring that up is it's different for everyone right Mm -hmm. um it's funny because we had a podcast recently with clayton conley he's also got a bucket load of kids you've got five daughters right and two Um, grandsons (laughs) and two grandsons (laughs) and like i know you're involved again you're not what Please don't take what we just talked about and say, <laughs> got it. Join a church, get business. That's obviously not what we said. Have kids Please, too. <laughs> and have kids. I, that's not what we said. That's not why we're we're doing it. But find your community. Right. Um, you guys are both fathers of of several children. Yeah. I don't know how many he four. has. He has four? Yeah. Dan's like, I got five. I win. I beat him. Um, uh, <laughs> but fathers, 
Um, and <laughs> charges in the door. And um, <laughs> but but you guys both your guys' community are very different. Yes. His uh, is his Ocean Beach business community. Right. His are the drum circles and musicians. Yours is church. But what what is in common is find something you're passionate about that right. you want to do and double down on that yep. and build those relationships. I'm not saying, okay, well, now you got to join a BNI group, a Latip group. you got to go to eight business yeah. mixers. Find what you're already doing and do more of it. Yeah. And that's a big thing because it's just social cir- circles around everything. I off-road. I used to mountain bike. I don't do so much anymore. I'm getting older, but um, off-roading, uh, mountain biking, hiking, just soccer. Yeah, I play soccer. So I have my team. I actually have playoffs tonight. <laughs> um, so go dad bods. <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of his team. Plugging my team. <laughs> um, so yeah, just doing those things though. You do what you love and and you'll make connections. And then follow up with the touches on social media. Follow up with the comments about, you know, your, your dog's so cute. Whatever it is. Thank you. Um, so just doing those little touches in the future or along the way helps solidify that. And then they see a post from yours and they're like, oh, he's a realtor. They don't, you don't have to drive it down their throat when you meet them. It can be uh, softly, you know, put into everything. So. Yeah. Now, so that's kind of fun. That's organic. That's social mm-hmm. media. Talk to me about some systematic ways you either have done, you do, or you plan to do building those relationships within uh, our database. You've got a database, your spheres in your yeah. database, obviously, but some people don't post on social. So how do you stay in touch with those? Yeah. Above and beyond the client appreciation events, calling, texting, emailing. Yeah. Uh, obviously, phone calls to those folks are important um, and doing it on a regular basis. So it's not just um, a shocker that I haven't called them for two years. They hear from me kind of quarterly and that that helps a lot. Um, are we gonna, let's get into the widget. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. I, I, I was, I I was, was like, teasing that on accident. Um, but but the trick is, and so I'll tease it now. We'll, we'll talk. Dan will talk about it at the whistle widget of the week at the end of the show. Yes. But the the trick is not just making up who you call. Right. Um, it's not saying, oh, I feel like calling uh, Samantha today, so Absolutely. I'll call her. Or I don't really feel like talking to so and so. It's having a systematic way to make sure you're staying in touch with people mm. at the right cadence. Right. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about how yeah. you have developed a strategy to do yeah. that. Well, and I build it out so that it's not like the first of the month I have to call everybody. Yeah. It's it's strategic and and so I do touch base with cool most of my folks all the time. We'll talk about that at the end. Yeah. Um, all right. So we got Instagram. What other kind of things are you doing to again? We're gonna you're gonna double your business next year. Sixteen mm. closed deals, two hundred fifty k GCI. The goal next year is 32, 30 to 35, yeah. um, but definitely 500K plus. Right. What are you going to, and, and that's the number that really matters. Yeah. Right? What are you going to do? Are you going to just do double the amount of work? No. Okay. Tell me what you're going to do. <laughs> Part of that is. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Part of that is targeting a little higher dollar um, okay. sales. So um, we were here in San Diego, so we do have a variety of uh a range of home sales prices that we can reach out to and uh, focusing in on some neighborhoods that have over million dollar, $2 million homes instead of kind of where I, well, you mentioned, I'm going to say Kyle, Kyle jokingly calls me double white or double Dan, double D- white Dan. Double wide Dan. I wasn't going to put you on bar. <laughs> I'll I did talk it. about it, but <laughs> so the first year when I started, that's what my first listing was, was a, a double wide when I, that I brought over to whistle Real yeah, Estate trailer park or trailer in a, in a park. So anyways, that's another story though of how I ended up closing pretty much five more deals and a referral because of that one sale, but that's a whole nother topic. You're like, fine, I'll do it all day. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll do, I'll get that one and get five right. out of it. Let's go. Yep. Um, okay. So targeting higher dollar, are you going to farm it more? Are you going to hold events there? What, what's the plan? Yeah. So I think the quick easy will just be open houses around in those neighborhoods and then really just dive into those and do the full uh, gamut on an open house, not just that. open the door and sit there for three hours, but actually make phone calls, circle dial, door knock, invite the neighbors, and throw a party. Pretty much, so yeah. I was gonna, I was gonna give the rundown, but you, you just did it. So yeah, it. doing all that stuff. <laughs> it's it's amazing the difference it can make on an open house. So if yeah. you if you guys are doing open houses, definitely take it a, take it up a notch and see what happens. And the script is way easier rather than like, hey, I'm Dan. Do you want to buy a house? Mm-hmm. Like. I hate, I hate that. I hate it. Uh, I'm not saying it's not valid, but I hate it as a consumer. Right. Um, but versus like, Hey, it's Dan. You obviously know the Smiths are selling their house three doors down. Just want to let you know, we're having an open house. There might be a lot of parking or there might be some parking issues. 
Yeah. I'd love for you to come down. We're having beer and pizza. Um, check it out. They did a really cool addition. I don't know if you've seen inside the house yet. Yeah. Like that's a way easier call. Yeah. So and absolutely. They want to see the interior of the house because a lot of neighbors haven't seen their neighbor's home and they're yeah. nosy and they want to know, but they don't want to uh, intrude type of thing usually. Yeah. So. And then when it closes, it's great to follow up because yeah. again, I've been to open houses in my neighborhood and then never know what happens to the house. Cause I'm not following through. I don't want to buy a house, but I'm right. curious. Um, but then if I got a call or a text or email and say, Hey, even if you didn't sell it or you didn't represent either side, Hey, did you know, I, I, I held an open house down the street from you two months ago. It just closed. Um, you know, for this amount of money. Right. Uh, what, yeah, yeah, just the follow up because it, it's really an added value to those those individuals. They're like, oh, this house sold for this much. Now my home could be worth whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's just adding value to them after the fact. Well, and it's not, a great way to add them to HomeBot. Yep. Say, and then, hey, do you want to see what's going on on a consistent basis? So I'll connect, add yep. your house. HomeBot's not our widget of the week, but HomeBot's a great oh, tool. Oh, no. This, this, <laughs> this podcast is all about plugging things we love. So, so. yeah, so HomeBot. Um, and then um, what else? So, so you can actually set up on a lot of your media channel or on your um, MLSs searches for solds. You could set up uh, just a really localized neighborhood uh, sold search and just send it to them. It doesn't have to be HomeBot, but that's a HomeBot's a great tool as well. Yeah, I love that. All right, so we're gonna double your thing, your 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 thing. <laughs> we're gonna double it. You know the thing, <laughs> the, thing. The, the closed deals. <laughs> um, focusing s- strongly on your sphere, uh, doubling down on the community events. Uh, the the our friends and family events, mm-hmm. really diving into your sphere and, and, and inviting them. Right. Um, Instagram strategy is another thing, really diving into posting, utilizing the collaborator feature mm-hmm. and commenting. Um, and then open houses in specific areas. Now, before we get onto the, the widget of the week, I, I'm curious, do you have specific neighborhoods you want to do? Or are you just saying, look, I want to do Santee, but not Chula Vista because I live in Santee and Chula mm-hmm. Vista's, I got to go to a toll road. Yeah. How specific are you getting? Um, it'll be, so I don't have it set yet where I'm going to be doing. Um, it, it may even be just searching over $2 million homes and and uh, calling the agent if it's not my listing and go hold it open if I can or uh, it within the, the sphere or within our group or our team. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I will dial in a more specific neighborhood um, and just dial in and farm too as well in cool. that same neighborhood because in the past it has been a lot of my sphere and i live in east county so uh, those that aren't from san diego it's uh where i live isn't the ritzy or la jolla a lot of people know that area it's funny when um, people are like or they're like where in san diego do you live i'm like what do you know they're like la jolla I'm like, yeah. not there <laughs> yeah not la jolla. so not the not the uh what is it called the jewel no not the jewel that's la mesa what is La Jolla called? Something. I don't know. Santee is the the La Jolla of the East. <laughs> all, I could th- all I could think of was that uh, not Ryan Ron Bur- <laughs> What was that? Oh, San Diego. <laughs> San Diego. Yeah. Sorry, got a wow. little sidetracked we, we there. Rabbit hole there, <laughs> uh, or whale hole there. We'll stay away from that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Um, okay, so cool. We got that so. dialed in. Anything else you want to add before we go into our whistle widget of the week? Um, can't. I mean, get out there and work. Do do your do your work. Do your job. There it Let's is. Let's go. Words to live by. Go out there and work and do your do your, do your <laughs> do, job do your and work. things. Uh, so well, dial <laughs> dial it in. That's one thing. So there's so many thousands of things that we can do as agents, and you could find you could search all day long and find, you know, literally 500 different avenues of tips or whatever an agent would do. Pick four and do them well. If you do those four well and you can add one, add one, add one, add another, add another, and just dial in those specific whatever it is and and uh, keep keep building on it. I love it. Um, All right. Before we get into the Whistle Widget of the Week, that's something that we use in our daily lives, saves us time, saves us money, makes us have more fun. I'm just going to ask you, if you're watching this, if you're listening, please, 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 if you enjoyed it, hopefully you've made it almost 30 minutes this far. If you enjoyed it, take a minute or two to write us a review on your favorite podcast platform. That means the world to us. Um, That is how we can continue to do this and grow our audience. So if you can just take a minute or two, if you're driving, don't do it while you're driving, please. Um, but that would just, that would mean a lot to me. That'd mean a lot to Kyle. And it would really mean a lot to Dan Benjamin, obviously. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, obviously, you can learn more about what we can offer at thewhistleway.com. Um, we talked about all the things you can do there. Join our, uh, find the podcast, find the Facebook group, our email newsletter, our uh, referral outbound referral network and ask us a question. And finally, if if this kind of hit home or if there's a, a nugget you took from this, 
please share it with a friend. Email it to them, text it to them. Uh, I don't care how you get it to them. Share it with a friend. <laughs> see, see if they can get some value out of it. All right. Now we go into our whistle widget of the week. This is something that we use in our business, saves us time, makes us money, or it just helps us have more fun. Dan, would you like me to go first or would you like to go first? I don't care. Go ahead. Do it. Kick it off. So our our uh, whistle widget of the week is... Not ours. This is yours. I have oh, my mine. Own. My whistle <laughs> is follow-up boss. So just a plug for follow-up boss. It's our, our customer relationship management, our CRM, CRM that we use. Um, the way that it's integrated, we have our segments all... Uh, dialed in and and segmented it out that it creates or or lets me know notifies me when I need to follow up with people and it is crazy how you know I haven't talked to someone in I don't know a couple months maybe if I've let them go into the segments and I call them up and they're like yeah I'm ready now I'm like sweet that's cool let's go it worked so so, so it's really just um it, it's just really definitely i mean, literally just met or talked to someone yesterday about this so um we are going to be getting them you know all dialed in and sell a house because of that follow-up well without follow-up boss my past crm that i had didn't do it wasn't as intuitive i had to set the task for the future and that just i mean i i failed at that often probably yeah so segments basically are smart lists which are, are lists up within your uh, database mm -hmm. that can be updated based on certain filters. So we have filters that we built at Whistle Realty Group of how often you should communicate with people based on what stage they're in. Mm -hmm. So if they're if they're hot, ready to go, ready to buy in the next thirty days, we're contact. We, we need to have communication Constantly. with them every week. Yep. If they're cold or, or you know, hey, I'm going to buy in a year plus. I think it's nine plus to whatever. Yep. Um, hey, let's Three let's six. continue to contact them, but we don't need to contact them every week that's mm -hmm. obnoxious let's keep up with them every is it quarter or yeah every that one's pretty month? much um, about quarterly a little less I think it's quarter and so we have a mix of those uh and i think we have seven segments that we built out mm -hmm. of this is how we should communicate with people at this time yep. and as we update them and where they hey they were cold now they're hot then they'll go into a different segment so right smart list through fub yep so and those lists and uh follow-up boss we call it fub can be used by actually escrow companies, other companies as well. So it's an extra plug for Follow Boss. Dan's <laughs> trying to get get hookups. Hey, Follow Boss, if you're watching this, Dan is a size large in sweatshirt <laughs> and he has a giant head, so maybe a big hat. If you can find uh, a hat that fits properly, I'll send it my way. <laughs> um, that's uh, we're not sponsored by Follow Boss, but we should be. That'd be cool. <laughs> Follow Boss, if you're listening. Uh, my widget of the week is something that we're going to be doing for. We're actually giving this away. I was looking for a, a right, thank good, you. Oh. Not to Dan. Oh. Uh, we're, we were looking for a great camera that we can use for uh, doing community content. You talked about, you know, yeah. the the reviews and, and the community content we create. Uh, we're big advocates of using your phone and getting started that way. But when you're ready to take it up a notch, uh, we we're looking for a camera that was good bang for your buck. The cameras that we use are for the for the media team are three, four, five, six, ten thousand dollars for the cameras. We're not looking for that. Most people aren't quite ready there, but they want to go up from their uh, iPhone or their Android. And so this is the one we did some research. We found the EOS R10. Uh, this is a uh, new camera that came out by Canon, uh, about a thousand bucks for the camera and the lens. And um, I always used to recommend Sony. They had a lot of cool features that they could do, but this one here is brand new. The, the Sony one that's similar in price is like five years old, mm -hmm. which is a thousand years old in technology terms. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Um, great camera, does 4K, does literally everything we would need it to do, and is probably 10 times the camera that I used when I first started. And so the EOS R10, um, this comes with the 18 to 45 millimeter lens. This is going to be in one of our giveaways for our community content challenge. But... Really excited about this camera. I wish I could take it out and play with it, but I want to give someone a brand new camera, so I'm not going to do that. But that is my whistle widget of the week. Awesome, Dan. Thank you much. Thank you much. Thank you so much for joining you're us. Fine. Appreciate you being on the Whistle Wood, Whistle Way podcast. And if you're watching, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Thank you, and you're welcome. Much. Wait, wait. Before you leave, I want to share some more tips and tricks that we're using in our business to take it to that next level. Just click right here, and don't forget to subscribe. Click right here.